but how is privacy going to be ensured? And then related, um, <coughs> there's always lawful and government intercept and, and risk of other compromising data, so data can always be compromised, but the question is, doesn't that mean realistically that everyone should encrypt everything that transits, whether it be a wireless or wireline any carrier that could potentially be hacked? So you guys could address that, the how piece of uh, data security. So because I'm deeply involved in what we're doing here, um, understand when Melanie was talking about 5G and the specifications are being worked out at a 3GPP, third generation partnership. I can't remember the other piece there for, but anyway. Um, all the data within that in transit is encrypted. Um, the, the historical networks like the 2G, 3G, data was not necessarily encrypted, but 4G it is, and, and going forward, 5G, all of that will be encrypted. We also store data at rest encrypted. So there's a lot of different components of best practices that, that are done by our company and the other companies within the wireless industry. So I do believe that uh, we treat it as if uh, every uh, every piece of data you have to ensure you're doing the best job you can to protect it with the tools that are available. So what we've done in 5G is we've worked with the specifications to ensure that the over-the-air part is all the that's all encrypted, as well as the handshake between the device and the tower. When you get to the core of the network, that's also encrypted all the way through back to your own network. Uh, and you are correct though that there is, once again, as I mentioned before, the idea of interfaces between, say, a servicing information service provider like a Facebook on the web service or whatever, and, and the core network. And where you have that interface, it's interesting because then the privacy laws of the FTC kick in. And they're the ones who uh, provide the regulatory guidance as to what those information services have to be concerned about. So it kind of brings the privacy question into play here as well, that the FTC takes, takes, uh, takes that action in that, in that regard. So what we as an industry want to see and that's why we once again want to work together with our public uh, partners, is we want to see consistency in uh, any type of, of guidance or regulation or legislation, because one of the most dangerous things, and one of the things we're wrestling with right now, is the recent California privacy laws, because that's one privacy regimen, you've got other states who are considering different privacy regimens, and you can imagine having to work under 50 different regimens. It's just not workable. So we would prefer, if you will, federal guidance, uh, on what makes sense as far as privacy. And we expect that that from FTC and the legislation to help for people. So basically, privacy and security are both basically super certain and complement each other. But again, you have to be very careful if you are asking for privacy and if you are asking for a security. To have a secure, uh, security of 100%, you have to compromise somewhere something is dropping, I don't know what's going on. So it's it's a very balancing act. Said that, now if you look at 5G, how is the 5G going to be different from the 4G? Basically there are three uh, components, the network like T-Mobile and other carriers, there will be service uh, application providers like the social media, uh, like AMP, uh, the websites where you will be doing shopping, and there will be a consumer. So right now what happens is the consumer, he logs into a network, there is a password exchange, there is a whole mechanism of exchanging that, and then the carrier just passes the information to the application at the, uh, the end of the day network. So right now there is no basically communication between the network and the application. So in 5G that will change drastically. It will be a triangle but every everything will be authenticated with everybody. It will not just be the 5G media will not be, or uh, telecom will not be a pass through by. They will have their own authentications, verifications and checks that okay, if T-Mobile is going to, uh, let's say, to a cloud in um, uh, Facebook, so they will have their own <coughs> authentications as well as for my private uh, authentication that I can log to T-Mobile first and then to Facebook, so that there will be an extra layer of protection there as well. Okay. Um, we've had a couple of questions talking about um, the talk about data breaches, there have been some very high profile big companies that have been breached in fact. Uh, but we also know that there's a lot of data held by small companies, whether it be uh, mom and pop shops that touch the 5G network in some manner, or uh, my members, the small telecom providers, much smaller than 
T-Mobile by uh, exponentially much smaller, although we're very involved with all of these task force uh, along with the T-Mobile as an association. But, you know, we're, the government's not known for being nimble, right? And that is certainly the criticism the government gets over trying to address some of these issues. Industry doesn't maybe have the right incentives. Um, we've got individuals who don't change their passwords from the factory issued password or don't secure their networks or uh, encrypt their data. So where does the responsibility lie ultimately to make sure that these networks are safe? And how do we ensure that they're safe across the board, from the small company to the large company? Uh, let me go first. Again, I'm just such a lot of No, no, no. She's fired up now. Again, I go back to it is the government's responsibility to make sure the networks are secured. How? Um, how? How? Well, just the same way when you get off a cruise ship, you have to go and make sure that the government official, right, you see your passport, everything's checked and balanced. So, for example, let me speak specifically to 5G. With the, 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 the setup that we have envisioned, you can imagine your data is like a soda can. The <coughs> networks are the strong. And, you know, whoever is the, um, whatever country, adversary country, as it looks over the straw, sucking, you know, up your data, sucking up your financial institutions. So if there is nothing on that straw, which is a network, a security, so the piece that we have is an end-to-end -end encrypted piece. So it literally, end-to-end, -end, no back or nothing. And that's the only way to do it because to have to worry about people changing their passcode, you're wearing all these different places where the actual breaches are happening on a service level. It's where the network itself. So we would be where the towers are, the 5G towers, the upgraded tower, that's where the security device would be, and as well as on the satellite. So that way there is an interception, it's monitoring for interception, and we know who the, you know, if it does get intercepted by an adversary or, a, you know, a hacker or, or just any bad actor, it would immediately, we would let the person know. So you would insert uh, government monitoring of all communications at the tower? I, I wouldn't say government, I would just be the government has to make sure it's done. Because just like you have your car, your brakes, the government does make sure it's done. It's really not. The, the, the thing about there's no, there's no Sorry, real. Sorry. Think about it. There is no real. Um, I think I'm just asking. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. 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 Let's just say what's, what they're doing right now isn't working. Every day, people's day is being breached. The financial that's, situation. That's not happening anymore. It's not happening. And especially with 5G. Where is 5G's not to kill you? So what ends up happening is with 4G. It is encrypted. 5G actually there's complete end-to-end -end encryption, but we had to make a, a caveat around that for Kalia, okay? Because if it's fully encrypted from the device all the way to the home network, which is your network, let's say, let's say you're roaming out of, oh, I don't know, uh, Colombia, and you're here in the U.S., and law enforcement's interested in you for some reason. If it's encrypted from your device all the way back to Colombia, Kalia doesn't work. Okay? The only way it would work is if that key was exchanged by that carrier in Colombia for you locally here. In that case, you know, your friend in Colombia would say, hey, somebody's tapping into your phone. So there's certain things within the standards that have to take into account the complexity, not only of them, but also of our own law enforcement requirements, which is, is good because they require, you know, uh, due process to be able to get the, 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 right, um, the right access. And all of that. So those types of things. Otherwise, uh, the encryption is across from that tower. Yes. Plus, the five G changes because now you have right. anti access. And I'm about 5G. That's a totally different animal. Right. So I think the five G, uh, as, as Melanie said before, the standards are. It's going to be the most secure networking out there that we've ever seen as far as wireless. And it's going to take time. And five G is going to take. Wow. Well, I still agree with you though that government has a rule. And when we were talking about the idea of services, okay, and, you know, we're thinking about Facebook and Google and so on, but other, other services are your city information systems, your traffic lights and the traffic control systems. Oh, so there's yeah. a whole bunch of things like that. And looking at how these, how these standards can be done, I think we've been encouraging <laughs> government to participate in these standards bodies. And, and we continue to have these discussions because they have a lot of value to add. And, and I think it's, it's, there's no one size fits all type of solution. And, you know, we may actually find it a little closer in terms of agreement on the solutions than they sound to the audience. <laughs>